Today, we are going to work Psalm 105 to bring about prosperity in our lives. And the way we work Psalm Magic is very simple. We take the psalm in question, and we read it out loud all the way through once without stopping. That's called an incantation. Then we go back through that same psalm, and we take it verse by verse, and we try to unlock the hidden occult meanings that we find there. And we do that by just searching and digging and contemplating and trying to apply what we think we find there to the situation at hand. So whatever you're bringing to the psalm, whether it's a goal or a problem, you try to apply the wisdom that you find in the psalm to that. And we see those little pieces of wisdom as seeds of magic that we plant deeply in the fertile grounds of our mind. In a very real sense, they take root and they grow and then they blossom forth and bear fruit after their kind. And that's what we're going to do together, you and I, right now with Psalm 105. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant. O children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham, and his oath unto Isaac, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance. When they were but a few men in number, yea, very few, and strangers in it. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He brake the whole staff of bread. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him, the king set and loosed him. Even the ruler of the people, and let him go free, he made him lord of his house and ruler of all his substance, to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. And he increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies, He turned their heart to hate his people, to deal subtly with his servants. He sent Moses his servant, and Aaron whom he had chosen, and showed his signs among them, and wonders in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made it dark, and they rebelled not against his word. He turned their waters into blood, and slew their fish. Their land he brought forth frogs in abundance, in the chambers of their kings. He spake, and there came divers of sorts of flies and lice in all their coasts. He gave them hail for rain and flaming fire in their land. He smote their vines and also their fig trees, and brake the trees of their coasts. He spake, and locusts came, and caterpillars, and that without number, and did eat up all the herbs in their land, and devoured the fruit of their ground. He smote all the firstborn of their land, the chief of their strength. He brought them forth with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Egypt was glad when they departed, for the fear of them fell upon them. He spread a cloud for a covering, and a fire to give light in the night. The people asked, and he brought quails, and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock, and waters gushed out. They ran in the dry places like a river. For he remembered his holy promise, and Abraham his servant. He brought forth his people with joy, and his chosen with gladness. He gave them the lands of the heathen, and they inherited the labor of the people, that they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. Praise ye the Lord. Not exactly what I would call the shortest psalm in the book. It says, O give thanks unto the Lord, 
call upon his name. So giving thanks to the Lord, let's remember what the Lord is when we work magic. It's very different than a religious understanding of these psalms. The Lord to us is the infinite principle of life itself. Okay, so it's all pervasive. There is no spot where God is not. It is the force of life. So if you think in terms of that movie, Star Wars, that's probably closer to a magical understanding of the Lord, that life force. And there's many qualities of that force, and those are the names of God. So when you call upon the name of God, you're calling upon the qualities of God, the nature of God. So in magic, a lot of times we have you know, Hebrew names of God or Greek names of God or, or Egyptian names of God, different kinds of magical names of God that we use um, that, that have, you know, different vibratory and numerological um, references. But ultimately, all that means is that each of those names represent a different quality of God. So f- when you're working psalm magic, y- you don't need to get all esoteric on, on yourself when you're thinking about the names of God. You think in terms of what are the qualities of God. So infinite life, infinite love, divine truth, divine law, div- uh, infinite spirit, infinite intelligence, etc., Make known his deeds among the people. Now, the people are the thoughts in your mind. That's And this whole psalm is about remembering when God came through for you. Remembering all the miracles in your life, all the magic in your life, all of the successes that you've had. And it's through remembering that we are evoking a feeling of success and prosperity. And through the evocation of that feeling of success and prosperity, we are creating it anew. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Gratitude is the is the fastest vehicle to make contact with this power. And then through remembering all of your past successes, you are able to stoke that fire of faith that you need in order to create that new prosperity that you desire. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works. So you're, you're telling the thoughts in your mind. That's who making his deeds among, known among the people are. You are educating your mind to the fact that you are now prosperous because it is God's will that you be such. Singing is a way of creating vibration, and it disturbs the current thought forms when you sing that vibration. It, it brings everything into uh, vi- vibrational sympathy with the new song that you're singing. So singing psalms unto him, in this sense, it's not necessarily even doing psalm magic. It's a symbol, singing meaning uh, vibrating, vibrating to the frequency of that which you desire. Talk ye of all his wondrous works, watching what you say, watching what you say, talking only about the wondrous works, keeping your speech sacred. Glory ye in his holy name. So you glory, glory is your aura. So your aura vibrates to the name of God. When when your aura vibrates to the name of God, then your aura is reflecting the qualities of God rather than reflecting the qualities of your other kinds of thoughts that we often call ego-oriented or ego-based thoughts. Any of those thoughts of poverty are now not in your aura because you are glorying in the holy name of God. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. The heart represents your deep mind. Your, your unconscious, subconscious mind. That's where all the magic works. So when your subconscious mind rejoices, your results that you get are going to be a reflection of, that, of, the, of those very thoughts. So we are asking God, to, in this sense, to reprogram our deep mind. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. So we are being instructed that we're not looking for problems here. We're not looking for poverty. We are not seeking what we don't want because we remember even in the New Testament, seek and find. You're going to find what you look for is what it's saying. So you want to seek for the Lord and his strength and seek his face forevermore. The face of anything is its countenance and you can recognize somebody by their face. And so you want to look for God in everything you encounter. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done. So remember every single time you've succeeded. 
Every time you've had a, even a small bit of prosperity, anytime something's worked out for you, you want to engage in those memories because you, you want to saturate your mind with this, these thoughts of prosperity. His wonders and the judgments of his mouth, there is no end to all of the, the wonders that, that have happened for you if you but remember them. There's many things that you can remember that are good that, that have happened in your life. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. Abraham technically represents your faith, and Jacob represents your imagination. So the seed of Abraham and Jacob, in this sense, you're talking about how everything that you experience in your life are the children of your faith and your imagination. So we want the faith and the imagination to be focused now upon infinite intelligence instead of on our ego. We want it to be focused on prosperity rather than our problems. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in the earth. Now, the judgments of God, the true judgments of God are, you are amazing. (laughs) I created you amazing. You're not powerful enough to change your essential nature. That is one thing you can't do. So God's always going to judge you. And God's always going to judge you rightly. And God's always going to think you are the fabulous soul that you are because that's how you were created. And God would have it no other way. His judgments are in all of the earth. The earth represents your circumstances. So you want God's judgment to be reflected in your circumstances, not your judgment. Because if you judge, you don't judge rightly because you don't know what you're doing with judgment. You know that. Every time you judge, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad, right? So you want God's judgment because God judges it as good and very good. He hath remembered his covenant forever. So the agreement God made with you is that through the law of cause and effect, everything comes into being. That is the that is the basic covenant, is the law of cause and effect. So if you have an effect that you don't like in your life, God's covenant, God's promise to you is that that's because of a specific cause. If you want to change that, you change the cause. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations, that means that this is the, the law of the universe for everybody. It can't be changed. There's no amount of progress that can change the law of cause and effect which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath upon Isaac. So again, we're talking about from the very beginning, from the very beginning, this has been the case, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law. Now, Jacob, in this sense, means the mind, uh, the, 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 the mind. So, so the laws of mind we're talking about. And to Israel for an everlasting covenant. Israel is your higher self. Israel is the the, the totality of your being. So the the so the soul, if you will. So uh, and and also the collective of souls. Do you know that there is a place in which all of us, as a collective of souls, are existing in absolute peace, prosperity, joy, and happiness right now? But we are having a collective nightmare that suggests otherwise saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance. When uh, when they were but a few in number, yea, yea, very few, and strangers in it. So Canaan represents that subconscious mind again. And when when God gave in the story, when God gave gave the gave them the land of Canaan, uh, it was a it was a beautiful gift. They basically got everything that they wanted. Unfortunately, then they decided to criticize it and say it wasn't quite good enough. But <laughs> in the moment, everybody was happy. <laughs> When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another, he suffered no one to do them wrong. So, this is the case for you as well. When your soul journeys from nation to nation, meaning pondering thought form after thought form, God goes with you, even when you are pondering thought forms which are negative. Even when you are pondering thought forms through that law of cause and effect, which bring you bad effects, God's with you. He suffered no man to do them wrong. And and the, the, that is the case for you right now. Even when it doesn't appear to be so, your soul is safe. You, your soul is absolutely safe and out of trouble. There is nothing that can bother who you are as a soul. 
right? But these these dreams that we're having in this world would suggest otherwise. But but God goes you from king, goes with you from kingdom to kingdom and suffers no one to do you harm or to to do you wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake, saying, "Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm." So that's in the past. You can even see evidence of this in your life, where there were there were times it seemed like all was lost, and it seemed like you were the victim of this world, and you triumphed. And and that is the truth of 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 how. Everything is supposed to work out for you. So remember those things. Remember when those happen. Get those very clear in your mind because this is a psalm that's using the magical powers of memory to create a new result. So it's through those memories that you want to find this power. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He broke the whole staff of bread. He sent, okay, so. Uh, when when God sends a famine over a land in your mind, it's because you have asked to be delivered from a problem. And so then God helps you by destroying those thought forms, right? And so when those thought forms are destroyed, from the point of view of those thought forms, it's a very scary moment. But from the point of view of God, it's a very good moment. It's a very happy moment. So if you are identifying with with the uh, the thought forms which are causing you problems if you think that those thought forms are who you are and then you call upon God to, to, to deliver you from your problems when those thought forms are being destroyed it can seem very scary in the moment he sent a man before him oh sorry he sent a man before them even Joseph who was sold for a servant now Joseph remember re- represents the, the imagination and when when Joseph is sold for a servant and goes into captivity that's us that's us misusing our laws of imagination using our powers our our most vital magical powers against ourselves whose feet they hurt with fetters he was laid in iron so when we misuse our imagination, we get those results very, very clearly until the time came that his word came and the word of the Lord tried him. Now, again, this is very important to understand that even we can only take things so far and, and eventually the, the, the universe comes in to, to say, okay, enough is enough. And there is always an intervention at some point. But this psalm is talking about the fact that you don't need to wait until things get so bad to have an intervention. You can start to utilize the, the powers of your imagination and the powers of your faith now in, in service of your goal rather than in service of your problems. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his substance. So that's what your imagination is. That your imagination and your faith, but in this case your imagination is the the ruler of of your house and your substance. If you need things, you can imagine them through your power of your imagination, you can create them to be such. That's the power that you hold. The power of your imagination pretty much is what God is is what the Lord is. And if you're a New Testament person, that's what Jesus is. That's you. It's nothing, it's nothing outside of you. It's nothing, it's no, there's no um, external deities that we're talking about here. There's no external anything. It's you and your imagination. And you, and you using your imagination against yourself versus using your imagination according to the eternal verities of life being in alignment with with uh, with God's imagination because you are you you are a result of God's imagination you are an image in God's mind to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom uh, Israel also came into Egypt and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham so every time that we move out of our understanding of of ourselves being one with God, we move into other lands. And oftentimes these other lands become a source of problem for us. Now, Egypt became a source of problem in the story, and Egypt just represents body consciousness in this sense, in this sense, recognizing things in the physical world as being the end of the story, rather than being an effect of your imagination. And so you can see how in the story where when, when uh, Jacob is imprisoned in, in, in Egypt, 
that represents your imagination being imprisoned in body awareness, in physical awareness, not, not being able to fully function. So we imprison our, our imaginations all the time by thinking, oh no, it's got to be this, or there's nothing we can do about that, or, or these things are the way they are and that's just our lot in life, or whatever. And it's so that's misusing our powers of imagination. And he increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. Now, that's what happens when we allow our imagination to think in terms of the name of God, as was talked about in the beginning of the psalm. When your imagination is a reflection of considering the qualities of God, then your imagination is in alignment with the creative principles of the universe rather than trying to thwart those creative principles. He turned their heart to hate his people and deal subtly with his servants. So that's basically, again, it's a very poetic way of saying that when you're, when you're, when you focus your mind on God rather than the problem, then the problem dissolves. It has to dissolve because that's where you're putting your imagination. That's where you're putting your focus. And in, in you got to think in terms of the, of the fact that these psalms are talking about metaphysical truth. They're talking about magical truth, absolute magical truth. And so it is absolute that if you are able to take your imagination off of whatever your problem is uh, on a regular basis, like on a daily basis, at least as a, 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 a few times a day, if you can, and stop thinking about the problem, stop imagining what's going on with the problem, and start thinking about God instead, that problem has a tendency to start clearing up. He sent Moses his servant and Aaron whom he had chosen. Well, if you think about Moses as being divine law and Aaron as being the execution of divine law or the executive powers of the divine law, then you understand what this verse is talking about. He sent divine law and the ex- execution of the ex- executive powers of that divine law and showed his signs among them and his wonders in the land of Ham. So that means that if you are in alignment with divine law and the and, and are are willing to to have those that law executed through you, then divine law will prevail over any circumstance in your life. It, it, it can appear sometimes when these miraculous kinds of things happen that the laws of time and space have been reversed, but that's just an illusion. It's that you are dealing with divine law which can supersede man-made laws. He sent darkness and made it dark, and they rebelled not against his word. He turned their waters into blood and slew their fish again. This is what's happening to the um, the oppressive thought forms in your mind. Once you decide that you no longer that you no longer want to dwell in in those lands, in those thought forms that are being described in this psalm. If you no longer want to dwell there, you don't. You no longer want your powers of imagination and faith in service of these uh, errant thought forms. Then those thought forms will be destroyed. He turned their waters into blood and slew their fish. These are just, again, these are memories of what happened in the story, but the story represents what's happening in your mind. Okay, so we never want to take these things literally. Uh, Anyway, Uh, their land brought forth frogs in abundance in the chambers of their kings. So even even the chambers of their kings. So a lot of times the kingpins of our thought forms seem so powerful and so insurmountable, and we'll never be able to we'll never be able to overcome some of these problems because we are so committed to them. But that's just not the case because of the powers of our imagination. When we change the focus from imagining these problems to imagining God's will instead, then then you get even even the 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 chambers of the kings of these thought forms are are frogs in abundance. <laughs> All sorts of flies, it says, and lice on their coasts. I mean, they just can't survive. These thought forms must decay, must go away, must dissolve. 
He gave them hail for rain and flaming fire in their land. Again, these destructive powers uh, are, are very satisfying in this sense because we recognize that all of these problems that we've been plagued with, and th- that it seemed like there was no way out, all of the poverty problems in this particular case, if you're coming to this psalm for, for prosperity, all of these things are being taken care of. And we're just using all kinds of fun symbolism to see how they're being destroyed. He spake, and the locusts came, and the caterpillars, and that without number, and did, uh, did eat up all the herbs of their land, meaning that anything that, that those thought forms rely on to help them, like the herbs, which are medicine, those are being destroyed as well. They're, they have no chance. They have no chance. Devoured all the fruit of their ground. They don't have any food to sustain themselves anymore, those thought forms. He smote also the firstborn in their land and chief of all their strength, meaning the children thought forms the thought forms which produce offspring, which is one of the ways that our mind works. Our mind's always expanding. And so in the Psalms, those are called offspring. So no longer will your mind expand along the lines of those, uh, of those errant thought forms, which are causing so many problems. He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Egypt was glad when they departed, for the fear of them fell upon them. Egypt, this scary, scary land, right? This, this seemingly insurmountable, very powerful land in your mind. These, the biggest issues, the biggest problems. Once we get going with, with this kind of work on those problems, those problems are really glad when you're gone. <laughs> Those thought forms are super glad when you're gone because, because they're scared of you. He spread a cloud for covering and fire to give light in the night. Uh, so even when it looks like you're in the, in the darkest part of your life, it's just like, how am I going to be able to, how am I going to be able to handle myself? I can't even see. I mean, I'm a stranger in a strange land. I have no, I have, I'm just all alone. I haven't, I have no way to help myself or support myself. But then you use your, 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 your powers of imagination to focus and connect with those eternal verities, to focus on the name of God or the qualities of God. What does God do? He spread a cloud for covering and fire to give light in the night so you can see where you're going. The people ask those thought forms, those thoughts, excuse me, and he brought quails and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. The, that story, that story where there's manna just kind of came. So, so the, this is your prosperity. You need it, it's there. You don't have to worry about it. You need money, oop, there it is. You need food, oop, there it is. You need shelter, oh, there it is. You need a better car, whoo, there it is. Right? So that's how, how this works, is, is you don't have to worry about being taken care of because your mind is right. You got your mind focused right. You've allowed those, those errant thought forms to be disintegrated, and now you're focusing your mind where it is the most powerful, on the names of God, on the name of God, if you will, on the qualities of God, thinking in, 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 along those lines. Therefore, your imagination is under the control of infinite intelligence, in which case you are imagining things that are good for you, and therefore it seems as though your prosperity just comes out of nowhere. But that's not what's happening. What's happening is that your mind is right, and when your mind is right, your, your circumstances always will follow suit. He opened the rock and the waters gushed out. Oh, you're thirsty? Here, open the rock. Water's gushing out. They ran in the dry places like a river. Where where you where there were dry places, there are now rivers. Where there was where there was uh, famine, there is now food. Where there was poverty, there is now prosperity. For he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant. So Abraham is faith. Abraham is faith, and the promise is that anything done through the powers of faith and imagination will come about. That's the promise of God. That's the covenant. If you get your mind right, your physical world will will follow suit. And he brought forth his people with joy and his chosen with gladness. Now, you are the chosen of God. That's who you are. Now, all of us are. Everybody's the chosen of God. But what, what is considered the chosen of God is not what God chose. It's us. So, we are the chosen of God when we choose God. 
rather than our problems. And again, when we say God, we're not talking about some external deity. We're talking about the power of your imagination in this psalm, the power of your faith. And he gave them the lands of the heathen. Wherever there are problems in your life, those, those heathen thought forms uh, and, their, and their manifestations, you get their land. You get it. You get to inherit all of that and use it for good purposes. That's a type of transformation that's happening. Where there was a problem, there is now success. Where there was poverty, there is now prosperity. Where there is disease, there is now healing. Where, the, where there was resentment, there is forgiveness. That they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. It's When we keep the laws of God, that simply means that we understand that there is a way that life works. And if we are working in consort with that way, all is well. When we are at odds with that way, there's a problem. Think in terms of gravity. Gravity works a certain way. If you don't work along with the laws of gravity and you work against the laws of gravity, you can hurt yourself. There's laws of electricity. If you don't work along with the laws of electricity, you can hurt yourself. And so that's the same thing with that, with this, is we want to be educated in the laws of God. We want to be educated in the laws of magic in this sense, because of how we're working this psalm. And when we recognize how magic really works, and at its core, at its essence, it's very simple. And in this psalm, it tells you, it's the, it's the, the way you use the powers of faith and imagination. And that's how you can keep his laws and statutes, is by recognizing that how you're using your mind gives you what you experience in the world. And then it ends with, praise ye the Lord, which it likes to say a lot. But praise ye the Lord simply means remember remember the, the eternal verities of life. Remember all the good that is in life. And get enthusiastic about remembering that good. That's what praise is. It's, it's, it's acknowledging that it's good. If you're thinking about your problems all the time, you know, that's not going to help you. And again, we're not saying that you should, that you should be irresponsible and just, you know, not look at, not, not take care of things. But we're talking about how you're using your imagination, how you're using your faith. Do you have more faith in the problem or do you have faith in the solution? Do you have faith and, and, and are you imagining a, a way out or are you imagining the worst case scenario all the time? That's what we're talking about. So praise ye the Lord is saying get enthusiastic about what's good in your life. And that's going to make a huge, huge difference in the way that you experience prosperity. And so just keep coming back to the psalm over and over again until you start to get a sense of, of peace and certainty about whatever it is that you brought to the psalm. And then once you do that, you know that your spell has taken and it's doing its job and then you can just move on to something else. Thanks for spending a little time with me today. I really, really appreciate you. Until next time, blessed be. Blessed be.